Welcome everybody to this edition of Coach Vogelai's Corner. I'm David Stearns. Joined with me on the phone as always is Coach Aaron Vogelai. Coach, how are you this evening? Ah, doing well, Cindy. How are you? Doing quite all right, quite all right. Had an exciting weekend of hockey with you guys, calling both those games on cross-ice feed and uh, looking forward to calling yet another one this coming weekend. But let's talk about this past weekend. Uh, first off, let's start with Saturday on the road. Uh, we know we got your post-game reactions from both games, but let's talk in a little detail uh, with what happened in both games for those that didn't catch your post-game comments. Uh, Saturday night, we took the trip up there to Delaware and played at the Gold Arena. Talk a little bit about things leading up to that game, considering it was right after the holiday break. Well, you know, I mean, I think the, the biggest worry you always have is, you know, your, your, your guys not, you know, being ready to, to get into action. You only have a certain number of practices when you come back from break and, you know, just not being ready to actually play a game. You know, Delaware played Friday night. We were, you know, fresh off the bus, so... But I thought our guys handled it well. We had a great week of practice, so um, you know, we 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 thought as coaches at least that we were ready to go, and you know, I guess we proved that we were. Now, a bit of a slow start there in the uh, the first game there, up in Delaware, uh, one nothing after one, resulting from a Dan Durante power play goal. Talk about the second period and how things opened up for you guys, taking a four nothing lead, uh, pretty much halfway through that second period. How did that dictate the rest of the game? Well, I mean, I think I think that first period was was kind of you know just kind of like the feeling out process of, of getting our legs. But I think once we hit that second period, um, you know, all the rust was kind of off, and we knew it was just another hockey game. We knew that we, you know, that we could take over a hockey game if we if we really you know put everything into it. And you know, we learned that you know the OC Tracy and Hannock line definitely did that. So you know, we we popped four quick ones right away, and you know, at, at that point, I think Delaware. You know, stop trying to win the game and it made things a little bit easier for us. What was the genius behind creating that line? Was it uh, just from experience watching these three players play individually? What what made you group them together in particular? Well, I mean, we unfortunately we had the injury to DJ Fadler, so we had to think of something quick. And uh, Hanny, I thought, had been playing really well as of late, and he he has the speed to keep up with Tracy and OC. Um, so that was that was really the the idea, just to, just to put it together and see how see how it worked, and at least make it so that uh, you know one of our top lines at least had three guys that could really get up and go up and down the rink. So I didn't expect um, what we were what we were going to see over the next five periods, but it was a really nice surprise. Now uh, talk a little bit about uh, the showing that you just had from uh, Sean O'Connor this past weekend, uh, namely in Saturday's game. You know, your fourth-year player uh, definitely shining in this contest. Uh, talk a little bit about how he came out. I mean, obviously he's been a great player for us for four years. Um, but, I mean, he had a career night. Uh, he had seven points. He, was, he, he took a part in every single one of our goals. He had an assist in the first period on Durante's goal on the power play and then he buried two on the same shift up against Delaware about a minute and a half in to the second period and really kind of blew the game wide open. And then, uh, you know, then Tracy went on his magic run for a hat trick and, and OC had a good part in every one of those as well. So, you know, it's really nice to see him, you know, pick up, you know, a nice career night. It's always nice to have one of those. So, you know, he's, he's just done a great job and he actually overtook for the team leading points. You know, so he's, he's riding pretty high with that. Now, a different story there on uh, Sunday down in your barn at Reisterstown Sportsplex. You took the one nothing lead into the dressing room after one, kind of the same way you guys did on uh, Saturday night with a Brandon Fritz goal standing right up front there, real pretty, and just banking one uh, home there on Roquefort. But uh, Delaware came back early on in that second period and tied things up uh, in a back-and-forth battle that second period turned out to be. Uh, talk a little bit about the second period battle back and forth. A very physical contest, uh, I mean, I guess in comparison to Saturday night where things got a little chippy towards the end, but it seemed like the physical momentum really stuck with Delaware throughout. Yeah, they did. They came out and they really wanted to compete with us. And, you know, we, I, I think we can do, you know, definitely a better, a better job. You know, we proved in the third period by coming back out and playing a little bit more our game, but I thought we got. You know, I thought we got outplayed in the second period, plain and simple. And you know, we've uh, moving forward, we got to make sure that that doesn't happen. But you know, Delaware came out; they wanted to be physical with us, and they and they, you know, they've got the forwards to do it. They've got they've got some talent. So, 
you know, tip my hat, but, you know, thank goodness that we came out in the third period. Well, of course, uh, the second period was all you guys, but uh, talk a little bit about the special teams in this weekend. Uh, you guys had, I believe uh, it was two pa uh, power play goals. Uh, actually, maybe it was three. Uh, yeah, three power play or two power play goals, I'm correct, on Saturday. And then um, I guess you guys had nothing coming on the power play on Sunday. You did speak to the fact that you want your power play to produce a little bit more, but your penalty kill uh, allowed one goal each night. Uh, talk a little bit about your special teams on the weekend and uh, any concerns about it going forward against Temple this coming weekend. I mean, special teams are always a concern. I mean, usually the team that has, you know, the best the best special teams wins the game. Um, that's usually the way it goes, especially when you have top teams, especially with rivalries and things like that, like we have going on this weekend. But, um, you know, I think, I think you threw the stat out that we were eclipsing right around 23% on the power play, which... You know, I guess it isn't bad. I mean, if you're going by NHL standards and things like that, but um, you know, the in the ACHA, uh, you know, here we we I really like you know a little bit higher than that. I'd like to be more you know a little bit closer to 30. Um, you know, like one of the, like my first year down here, we eclipsed at right almost 40 percent. So you know, that's that, that's kind of where where we want to get back to. But so we're going to put the work in. We did this week, so. But, you know, the penalty kill kind of comes and goes. I mean, Saturday night's goal was a five-on-three, and O.C.'s stick had broke, or he had lost his stick. So it was really like a five-on-two with a guy just floating around his own. So, you know, that was unfortunate. Otherwise, I think we I think we killed that one off. Um, and then the, the power play goal that we gave up, I, I mean, Miller just didn't see it on Sunday. So, you know, it's, those things are going to happen. You just got you have to find a way to rebound, and I'm glad we did that. Now, you split the weekend between Drago and Miller against Delaware, and of course these were two important games to the fact that you guys have clinched a playoff spot in the Macha South, or the Mock South, as we call it these days, and uh, you guys are also sitting at number one in the Mock South with Liberty just two points behind. Uh, you split the weekend with Drago and Miller. Um, was there any particular reasoning behind that? I mean, Drago had a, a phenomenal performance only allowing one goal on Saturday and then Miller allowing only two on Sunday. Uh, talk about the split weekend between those ten, uh, two tenders and how they played. You know, we, it's something that we've been doing all year. Um, you know, we're, and, we're, and we're probably going to pull that forward again this weekend. Um, you know, Drago, Drago has proven himself to be, you know, a great goaltender for us. He proved it all last year. And when he's healthy this year, um, you know, he, he's been phenomenal. Um, so, but Miller has come back when Drago was hurt and, you know, and he wasn't able to play that, you know, Miller came back and in some cases maybe even saved our season because he was he, just by the brilliance of the way he played. He's definitely earned some more playing time by it. So, you know, I kind of also put this schedule together for the two of these guys to kind of run, run the, run the table. So, you know, it is, I didn't want this just to be, you know, 30 games of John Drago and Miller sitting on the backside. So, you know, I wanted to make sure that they, you know, they, they both get, you know, close to equal playing time and we'll see, you know, one of the coaches will sit down and we'll discuss later on down the road. But, you know, as of right now, I, th I think they're both doing a great job. They both give us a chance to win every game. So they both deserve to play. Now, strategy-wise, you have them going up against Temple this coming weekend. Who do you start first and who do you have on the back end uh, all considering that the following weekend you guys have Liberty and Virginia Tech, and Liberty's knocking on the door there for the number one spot in the Mock South. Yeah, I think we're going to stick to the same um, rotation that we've had for the last, uh, I want to say almost month and a half now, two months. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go with Johnny on uh, on Saturday at home, and we're going to go with uh, Trevor Miller on the road up at uh, up at up at Temple. Now let's talk a little bit about that uh, Temple UMBC matchup. You spent a number of years there as their coach, and uh, came down about what uh, four years ago, three years ago now. It's yeah, this much worth year down here. Yeah, four years. So, uh, in the last three years, your team has gone five and two against them, and uh, very strong showing there in the beginning. It was my first season with the team, as well as your first. Uh, you guys handily um, <laughs> beat them. I, b I believe one score was like nine to two, but. Um, Talk a little bit about how this matchup has developed over the last four years uh, that you've been coach of UMBC, walking away from Temple. Well, you know, I think when, when I first made the made, made the switch from Temple to UMBC, it was it was a, it was already a really nice rivalry. There was a lot of respect between the two clubs. 
Um, you know, you, you know our, our top players of being Pellis and Frank and Alto, um, at UMBC's top players at the time were, you know, Drew Hartcherick, the Post brothers. Everybody had pretty much mutual respect for everybody. So uh, when I came down um, and, I guess, switched teams, so to speak, um, you know, that, that, that mutual respect was gone and it turned into hatred. Um, and there was some, some very, um, you know, there was bad blood between both clubs. Uh, as time has gone on, I think a lot of that, you know, number number one, mo- most of those kids have graduated now. Um, but the the bad blood, some, you know, somewhat remains. But a lot of it more now kind of goes for respect and things like that. So um, most of the old rivalry doesn't actually exist anymore other than everybody knows why we hate each other. So it works out to be usually two very good hockey games. Now talk a little bit about uh, what has happened in Temple season. Right now they're sitting at 11 in the Southeast. And uh, yeah, what what do you think has um, transpired with this team? I mean, are they in the bit of, uh, middle of a transition stage, or what is it that you think? I, d- I don't know, to be honest with you. I've seen them play a couple times. They've got some talent up front. They've got some talent um, defensively. So, I mean, they, they can play. I mean, they, they, they can definitely catch you if you don't want to play. You know your your best on any given night. So, um, I mean, they're you know they have one of the better defensemen on you know in the league, being an Andrew Trainer. Uh, mm-hmm. Their forwards, you know, Cody Bass has proven to be a very good freshman for them. I think he leads their team in points. And Joey Pisco, if it hadn't been for a suspension, I think he would be you know one of the top scorers in the in the, in the league. I mean, he's just he's a phenomenal hockey talent. So, you know, they're 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 going to be very tough to deal with. You know, usually they're very tough physical games. So. You know, I, I mean, I obviously they they aren't where exactly where they need to be. They've lost some games they shouldn't have, I guess, or or, or that they didn't want to. I'll we'll put it that way. But you know, they're they're going to be a tough team. They're they're going to be looking to sneak into regionals. Now, uh, talk a little bit about you know you, you alluded to uh, to me before. You know, as we noticed over the years, the goaltending phenomenon for them, um, Will Nyfeld. Uh, talk a little bit about their transition with uh, goaltenders and how important the role of goaltender really is to a team because, you know, obviously you've built your team like around P.J. Carmack back at the time when you took over UMBC, and then uh, you've built your team now around Johnny Drago. Um, what do you see in the goaltending future for Temple? Do you see Mullen being, you know, the guy going forward? I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot with a question, you know, to – kind of jab at them or to, you know, make any criticism towards them. But uh, how important do you think goaltending is to uh, Temple after having Will Neifeld uh, graduate and move on? You know, I mean, as far as I've ever, you know, even known of the Temple team, they've always had good goaltending. Back when I started, they had Berkheimer and and, uh, and Walker, and they were, you know, very good goaltenders. And Berkey uh, was with me uh, the entire time I was there. Um and then they had after after Berkheimer they had they had Will and Will Will's a phenomenal talent. He he truly is. I mean he proved it last year by making uh sixty two saves up against us at the up at the Mid Atlantic showcase. He just stole the show when they when they beat us three to two. So um you know, you know, Mullen has had a he's had a decent year. Um, you know, and I you know, I, I think goaltending on any team, you know, is is extremely important. I mean, you, your goaltender has to be able to give you a chance to win every game, and that's all you can ask for the goaltender. Sometimes he has to win a game, but most you know, he has to give you a chance to win every single game. And you know, from from looking at the scores, you know, Mullen and Zabrowski, and um, I, I don't know if they're their goaltender at all, but um, you know, they they've basically done that. So you know, for the most part. So I mean, they're. It's going to be important this weekend. I think the goaltending is going to be very important. Both teams can shoot the puck. Uh, both teams have some talent of talented forwards that can definitely put the puck in the back of the net. So, you know, it's it's they're they're going to get tested on both sides, both Johnny and Miller, and and then also um, Mullen on the other side. Now let's uh, play a little game called Stroke the Ego, and that ego that's going to be stroked here is Jeff Pellis. You know, your connections with Temple are still close in some degree, as you have an assistant coach who used to play for Temple, and looking back at his final year's stats, uh, 14 goals, 29 assists for 43 points. He was second on his team in that category, and he was up there in penalty minutes, too. 
and uh, power play goals. He seemed like a, a good uh, special teams guy there. Uh, talk a little bit about Jeff Pellis back in those days and, uh, you know, your reason for bringing him on board as your assistant coach. Yeah, Pe- Pellis, Pellis was an incredible, incredible player. And as good as a player as he was, he was even a better leader. Um, you know, he, he, did a, he did a phenomenal job both on and off the ice. Uh, Pellis' main, um, one of his main attributes that's very rare in this game is that he was actually faster without with the puck than he was without the puck, um, which is something that you don't see very often you hear even less of. So, you know, he, he did a great job. He, he centered my top line uh, back with our leading goal scorer at that point in time, Chris Altamare, uh, which in my opinion I thought was probably, you know, probably should have been an All-American. He was absolutely a phenomenal talent. And Jeff and Alto worked extremely well together. So, um, and Jeff and I always have just gotten along. Um, you know, there was a time after I left that, you know, tempers tempers flared between the two of us. But uh, we were able to find find a way to, to have our friendship kind of come back together, and our respect, um, you know, was still held intact. So that was a great thing. Um, and you know, he, him and I had always talked about you know him and I were kind of working together, and you know things just kind of added up where it was where it was going to be an opportunity. He stepped away from Temple on his own recognizances, and and I I got a chance to hire him, and and he took it. Now, a player that was uh, either a step behind or a step ahead, granted, whatever season you're looking at as far as stats, whether it be 07, 08, or 08, or 09, um, Ryan Frame had the opportunity to play on the same sheet of ice and on the same team with Jeff Pellis, and now he is an assistant coach behind uh, Jerry Roberts there in Temple. Uh, you know, you got your assistant coaches there that uh, played against each other. Talk about how much this matchup's going to mean for Jeff Pellis being, for the first time on the bench, on the other side. Um, well, and, I mean, Jeff, Jeff was here for us last year as well. So mm-hmm. I mean, he, Oh, right. Yeah, he, second, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> it's all right. So, I mean, he has lived through it, but he right. actually, he actually, he actually has played with every single one of the, uh, temple coaches. Well, um, that, that says something. So, you know, <laughs> the, yeah. The head coach, he played on a line with Frain. Um, right. You know, because you know, he was able to play with uh, Jerry Roberts and Chris Mariella when he was an undergrad, when he Jeff played with me and Frain, okay. was he was actually in graduate school. So, um, but yeah, I mean he he's actually had that opportunity to play. He was very close friends um, with with Jerry and Chris. So, you know this this matchup is you know is, is extremely important to, to Jeff. I mean obviously emotions run high when. He's playing his alma mater, and some of the guys that he knows, he coached a good number of the guys still on mm-hmm. uh, Temple's roster. He took a couple of them to Nationals with him you know, a couple of years ago in San Jose. So there's definitely um, going to be some emotions on both sides of the benches, both on our side and on theirs. So it's going to be it's going to be a really fun week and be a part of it. I'm looking forward to it. For my not knowing that, that is my fault because I took a year off from UMBC Hockey, so I do apologize for taking a year off now. <laughs> That's right. That's my way of rubbing it in. Oh, thanks. You know, it's always appreciated. <laughs> so <laughs> what, are you, what are your expectations out of this matchup, you know, from your guys? Uh, obviously, you're, you're, you're dealing with an injury with DJ Fadler, an up-and-coming player, freshman, and, um, you know, it, what what is it that you're seeking from your guys? It seems like O'Connor's on a hot streak, eight points in the last two games. And, um, you know, I, I may be discounting anything he had done prior to the holiday break, but uh, w- what are you looking for from certain guys or uh, from your team in general? I think just as a team in general, um, just to, to maintain the consistency that that we've been that we've been building. I mean, I think we took a kind of a step back on on Sunday a little bit, um, just from our consistent play and everything. But you know, that we've had over the last month, you know, now winning six in a row. But you know, you're going to have those games. So we just kind of need to get back to what we do best, and that's move our feet and bring our A game, and make sure we put pressure on the puck, and and uh, and be kind of kind of push the pace of the game. We that that's where we're at our best. So that's what I look for them, and and if they do that, the individual success will come. It's just um, you know, it's more of a team side that I look at. Do you think that these next two weekends are going to determine your final ranking position 
regardless of the Penn State game? Uh, no. Um, because you only have one game that matters in February in that first weekend, and that's Penn State. But uh, is this is this weekend and next weekend really going to place you guys? Can't solidify it for us, but it can ruin it for us. Put okay. It that way. You know, we 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 take care and we and we win four games. We're either still gonna, we're either going to move up to number two or we're going to be sitting at number three. But if we lose a good number of those games or one or two of them, uh, we definitely could drop and we could take ourselves out of the running for the auto bid. So hmm. they're they're extremely important just to make sure that we are still in position for that auto bid mm-hmm. come the come Super Bowl Sunday. Do you think it's all going to come down to that matchup against Penn State though? It's a storybook ending if it does, but I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just a, there's there's so many things that that can go wrong with it with that, and there's so many things that can happen between now and February third. So um, I, I just I don't want even I don't even want to look that far ahead yet. Well, that's a shame because I was going to ask probably I'll probably ask this for the next couple of weeks. Are you willing to push that game back a little bit just in case the Ravens make the Super Bowl? No, I'm a Vikings fan. You're going to keep the same time. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to keep the same time. Oh, you're going to have everybody distracted. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Well, Coach, any final thoughts going into this weekend against your uh, your old team? No, I'm just looking forward to it. It should be a really great matchup. I've, you know, this will be you know the last weekend, unless we see him in the postseason, that I get to that I get to coach up against Andrew Trainer. I've been actually coached him ever since his freshman year in high school. So, um, no, we, we started his, you know, his major part of his hockey career when we were on the same team, but unfortunately we're going to end it when we're on different teams, but it's been a pleasure to watch that, you know, watch that guy grow and become the defenseman that he is. And some of the other guys that are, that are going to be moving on that I've, 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 I've had a, a nice chunk of their hockey career. So just looking forward to it. the emotions will run high. These should be two really good hockey games. Just looking forward to it. All right, Coach. Well, good luck this weekend, and we'll catch up with you before the game on Saturday. And, of course, we will have that broadcast at 4.30 from the Reisterstown Sportsplex. Excellent. Thanks again. Take care. All right, that's Coach Aaron Vogelai for the UMBC Retrievers. Once again, as I said, we will have that broadcast on crossicefeed.com. 4.30 start against the Temple University Owls. This is David Stearns for Coach Aaron Vogelai saying goodnight, everybody, and as always, don't stop believing. Take care.